Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Mechabellum. Today, we are watching the um, Asian Championship Tournament. We have Ranma in blue versus Long in red. Ranma actually picked up the Giant Specialist. That means that you can unlock Giant units for free. Uh, pretty good card as it goes to savings, and we do see Giants quite a bit in the meta right now. Um, and then we have... Oh, <laughs> we have Long who is a supply specialist rocking in with some steel balls and what looks to be a couple of crawlers. Ranma is going with a very defensive play here. Uh, Ranma being our blue player, he's just got a whole bunch of fang right up at the front line. Very defensive positioning here. That way the fang are slowly eaten down and this is very important. Um, whereas Long going with a very aggressive play I do think that this will go in the way of Long to start with, just because those crawlers are going to be very annoying to get through, and the help of those Mustang is pretty good. But do you see how quickly these Fang are, and um, uh, Stormcallers are cleaning up these units on the right? It's really these Mustang that made a big difference here for Long, eventually getting on the tower, and this will be a wipe. These crawlers are just deadly. Um, Really, uh, a tale of two cities here as one player going ultra defensively and the other one going very aggressive. Now, this does tend to favor the slower player uh, as time goes on, just because they have more units and more space in the back row. Uh, what I'm talking about here is that... Uh, let's watch this tick over. Man, the rounds always take a moment to tick over there. Ooh, deployment spec is phenomenally powerful. Um, I do like it. Instead, we see the strike specialist coming out here for long. What does Rama choose? There's a case to be made for everything. No, opting to skip. So what can happen here is that Long's, all of Long's units are deployed to the front, meaning that he has a lot of space in the back, whereas we see kind of a middling spacement here for Ranma, meaning that he has time and areas to put more units. So if he needs to, he can pop down a Vulcan in the center that will burn away all these crawlers. He could put a couple of Mustang or Steel Balls of his own. Instead, opting for a whole bunch more Stormcallers. And these Stormcallers will do fairly well, but they're going to be flanked and destroyed by just a ton of Steel Balls. And the Mustang are definitely more than enough to clean up huge swathes of Fang. They have more, more range, they deal a significant amount of damage, and Fang just have no HP to start with. A very quick wipe here. Um, but hey, we shall see how it continues to go. Ranma has a lot more HP. The game is now finally uh, at the same period. Both players rocking in with about the same HP at this point, even though Ranma has lost two rounds. <clears throat> uh, the subsidized crawlers here could be very strong for long. Instead of going with the haste module, I can see that. He needs to get his units into, um, into contact as quickly as possible. How is Ranma going to deal with this aggression? This is hard. He's kind of put himself in a, a tough situation. The Stormcallers aren't great against really any of the units on the field here. These Crawlers will be very good. Ooh. <clears throat> Opting to allow his Stormcallers to shoot more often, but having reduced range. This is actually a very good play. Um, just because all of the units that uh, he's currently having to deal with run straight at him and have fairly low range. Mustangs don't have the greatest range. Actually, I'm interested. This reduces the range by 45, so now they're at 135 versus the Mustangs at 95. Okay. It's not too, too bad. If these Fang eventually come online, dealing more damage and having more attacks uh, intervals or less time in their attack interval... I can see this going in the way of Ranma, but he has a lot to do just to beat the uh, his opponent's baseline units. Now that can be a big issue here. Stormcaller shots go out, and they're good, dealing tons of damage, lots of fire. What's unfortunately happening is that he's not able to peel through all of these steel balls quick enough because one or two crawlers will make it online, um, and that will divert your entire swath of Stormcallers. And those one unit of crawlers here to defend his flanks were not enough by any means. And this is just going to be a staggering defeat. What could actually work here is a couple of units of fortresses. The steel balls will be an issue. 
but on this flank the steel balls would would do uh basically nothing there's the fortresses yes ranma grabbing them up he has the ability to get rid of the crawlers at this point he just needs something to deal with steel balls and the uh, mustang will eventually be able to kill a fortress but it takes an exceedingly long time mustangs walking in at 36 damage a shot they do shoot very quickly uh, but the fortress having 53,000 HP, it should be able to deal with this. And he's finally using his giant specialist. I think this is a good play here by Ranma. We see Long grabbing up just a whole bunch more Mustang. He also has the strike specialist, meaning that he could summon in some more units here on this flank and really give it, uh, give it a good go, just completely swarm the opponent. Ranma's opted to skip a lot at this point. There's all of the shots go in. This fortress actually doing a fairly good job at delaying a lot of those units, uh, uh, getting rid of the crawlers, delaying a lot of the units, and now he should have enough time to give his storm callers a moment or two to deal with these Mustang. Unfortunately, I just don't think he has enough meat as of yet. In a little while, this can come together, but that uh, orbital bombardment really did a number for uh, long, dealing just a great amount of damage. And also, his fortresses just don't have any upgrades. Ooh, he actually has the new fist upgrade. Let's see if Ranma picks up the new punchy, punchy fists on the fortress. Right, it's a new term I've coined. Let's actually see what they're called. I think it's like the electro shock punch or something like that. Missile device specialist here for Ranma. I would maybe... Oh, this is hard. None of these cards are very useful for long, but the deployment module could be good. Okay. Grabbing the Overlord, uh, the Launcher Overlord, meaning that its attack interval is just so much better. Uh, this thing will now be able to just cut through Steel Balls significantly quicker. Steel Balls do take a little while to ramp. That's why our uh, why Long has grabbed Energy Absorption. It's a really good play. Oh, and here's the Punchy Punchy Finch, the Rocket Punch. For those who don't know, the Fortress will launch its fist to attack enemies, triggering once when the Fortress is below 70 HP, and once when it's below 40 HP, the rocket punch ranged 180 meters, causing 15,000 damage to the target. Whoops. Also, it's got this cool new animation. Look at that. Man, this fortress is doing great. Just cutting through steel balls. You wouldn't think it, but actually fortresses can do quite well against steel balls. It needs to shoot this hacker. Ooh, and it does. I didn't even pick up on that hacker play in the background, but it is there. Let's see if this guy will launch his fist. He's almost there. There he goes! Blammo! That's pretty cool. Um, and it also deals damage in a small AoE. The damage of the rocket punch is increased by 15,000 per level. That's pretty good. And that's a huge amount of damage on long. So Ronda had suffered many rounds of just getting cut. You know, little cuts here and there. Little cuts, little cuts. Now, he's actually able to start pushing his opponent back with a huge amount of damage. Wow, an extended range on the Overlords as well. Unfortunately, this Overlord not getting an upgrade, meaning that that Orbital Javelin will kill it if the Orbital Javelin does drop here, and it will. Without this, um, without this Fortress here, um, I, I know I said Overlord previously, but without this Fortress upgraded, this Javelin will collapse this flank. There is not enough here to deal with that. Ooh. I don't know if this is a great play or not a great play. The hackers now have shields. I don't know if leaving this flank fairly undefended is a good idea. I think getting one more unit of crawlers there would have been useful. Just to swarm uh, the hacker. Because you don't want your hacker chilling on your overlord. Luckily, this overlord now has just ridiculous HP. Overlord on the left gets absolutely obliterated. And this hacker down the center is really just being used as mobile barriers. It's not terrible. I will say it's not terrible. A lot of these units do benefit from it. With the amount of storm callers on the field, I'm not sure how beneficial uh, this hacker is. And it's kind of getting outpaced quite a bit. But it's definitely not the worst thing in the world. I mean, it's, it's kind of working. And now that these uh, Mustang are in range, it's going to protect them for a little while. Ooh, and we might see... Nope, I was going to say we might see this um, fortress get picked up. But no, the fortresses are going to stand proud. 
and just completely decimate this army. Oh no! His own uh, research center killed by a storm caller that had switched sides, deciding to go off. Wow, those rocket punches are super cool. All right, can Long bring this back? He suffered two pretty significant losses, and these fortresses are not going anywhere. Now at level three, these things are going to be ungodly to kill. I would hope to see some melting points or something else just to deal with this. I'd also like to see these little fang get an upgrade and give them some shields or something just to continue the... Oh, sorry for the pause of my uh, casting here, but an overlord popping down. I think this is a great play as this overlord will be able to just dominate the skies these fang are not going to be nearly good enough to survive we do have a um anti-air barrage available as an upgrade for the fortresses but it's very expensive at 800 dollars. it may be cheaper just to continue to grab snipers and these snipers are going to have a lot of work for themselves they're going to have to do so much damage in order to make this work Ooh, and the lifelink is not the best here on these uh, steel balls anymore as they're just not able to, uh, to withstand this exceedingly heavy damage from the fortress. Are there any Fang left? That There is one Sniper. If the Sniper falls, that's it. I don't think this Sniper will ever... Oh, there is two Snipers! <gasps> this other Sniper might be his savior. I was going to say, I don't think the Sniper will ever get online to kill the fortress to kill the overlord before this fortress dies but sniper on the left is eventually going to clinch it out and that's gg wow great game by both players ranma playing it very slowly um i will see you all in the next round hello everybody if you have been enjoying these casts if you enjoy the channel please like and subscribe it really does help let's watch our second game we have sama versus leo bithyar <laughs> Sama will be our red player, opting for the Quick Supply Specialist with Marksman and Mustang. I love that combination, and he's got a good amount of health. Versus... Ooh. The Speed Spec could actually be fun here. And it does have a good amount of HP. Same with this Aerial Specialist. That's a, that's a huge amount of HP. Going with the Speed, actually. I probably would have gone with the Speed as well. Let's see what both players do with these units. Right now, I would have to give it to old Leo here. Leo B. Brother. Uh, with two snipers as well. Interesting choice. Now he's got very good... He has good chaff units. He has good single point damage. And he has good AoE. I like this. This is a very strong setup. Just went with one of the standard deployments. A very good deployment. Two Mustangs. And three snipers followed up with a couple of crawlers. Okay. Okay. We have a basic mirror match here with a couple of differentiations and some units and their typing. Ooh, I've never seen a deployment like this here from Sama. This is really interesting. I, so what could happen here? And we'll see it in just a second. Some of these crawlers might get delayed by running into this tower, whereas the rest of them might run through, thus uh, allowing him... How does that work? Now, they split pretty evenly, but there is one or two further back on either side. That's really important when you have units like snipers on the field. You see this little guy all the way back here? He would draw off a sniper's fire, and every single unit will shoot at that one singular unit. Whatever unit is closest to your units is what will be shot at. So these storm callers could all be distracted by one crawler who had a delayed income. Um, I really like that. I think that's very interesting. It's going to come down to one Stormcaller versus one Sniper. Uh, honestly, it could go either way here. Um, I have seen Stormcallers miss every shot. That one seems to be pretty on his, on his stuff, but Sniper might come over there, kill the tower, then kill the Stormcaller. He's getting a little bit more drunk as time goes on. Ooh. That's a good shot, and the Stormcaller will outrange the Sniper. If he's able to kill the tower, he'll definitely get the Sniper. Oh my god, I thought he was going to miss it. And there we go, the quick rotation. It feels to me like it takes longer for units to turn to shoot than it does for them just to like move their whole bodies. Uh, but I, I think most players feel that way as well. Missile versus shield. 
I like both of these. They both come out in two rounds. They're both free. Actually, the shield costs fifty dollars, um, but I feel like the shield's just slightly more useful. Uh, wow! And an early Vulcan here, using up that extra two hundred dosh. Okay. I like it. This Vulcan will do really well. And it's a huge HP sink at the early game. 35,000 HP. La Laobi Brother, our red player, actually playing his shield in the perfect location. It's always uh, interesting to watch players on different servers choose left or right. I've noticed that on the Asian and European servers, more things happen on the left side of the field, whereas on the American servers, things tend to happen on the right side. I'd, I'm not a psychologist. I'm barely even literate. So I don't know if there's something to read into that, but the more you know. And this Vulcan actually killing off enough crawlers for the crawlers in the center and on the right to actually make it in. Now it's just going to be Mustang. Oh my god, those Mustang all get cleared up. That is unfortunate. And this Vulcan may be able to tank enough shots to actually get through this shield. Unfortunately, our little sniper bro on the left is not going to make it. Uh, eh. This is actually going to be closer than most people might think. Actually killing that tower at a very opportune moment just so that his shield might last through this round. Oh no, these Mustang. Mustang, you had one job. Oh, this is going to be heart-wrenching if old Sama here loses his, t his shield. It's $100 wasted. The sniper's got a lot of work to do. Oh, is this enough? Oh my god, Sniper! Oh, ho, ho, Sama's got to be so happy with that. That that shield is exactly where you want it to be. That thing was probably on like 2 HP. Ampcore coming out here for Sama. Ampcore coming out here for Lyobi Brother. Man, what a cool name. I love the creativity that we see uh, by this community. Double Vulcan. One of them's going to get the Ampcore. There it is. How do you beat Vulcans? Well... You can simply get a lot of snipers, you can get a lot of storm callers, or you could unlock something like a melting point or anything that flies. So he's got a lot of options here. Unfortunately, in the early game, Vulcans can't feel like a bully just because they have a ton of HP. They clear off all of your chaff very quickly. And if they, they kind of can become dominant within a game, if they get to level two or level three, especially with the Scorching Flame upgrade, they're able to cut through things like tanks and must or um, uh, steel balls, even other Vulcans very quickly. Fortresses are also a, a very good answer, especially with the new rocket punch ability. Uh, well, there goes all of the chaff in the middle, and these Mustang are going to make a good show for themselves just being there to absorb shots from the sniper. And this is definitely going to go in the way of Sama, even being able to clear away the shield at this point. He's been looking to kill that shield for a little while. Uh, the shield, hey. It's uh, $50, and you get two shields. So I'd, I'd highly recommend the, the shield as an upgrade. Um, a really interesting choice also to see the uh, differentiation between the two players, where one goes with a missile, one goes with a shield. One gets giant war crime robots, and the other one gets snipers. <laughs> That's a lot of snipers. Snipers can become runaway. Sama grabbing the smoke bomb. Everything here is long range. That smoke is going to do a great job. And he's even... Ooh. Ah, there's the fortress here by Leobi Brother. That fortress is going to absorb so much damage. But if the smoke pops in a really good position... Ooh, this is going to be tough. Ooh. I do like this placement here by Leobi Brother. That's going to be exactly um, online where I believe the Vulcan should start shooting. So the Vulcan's probably going to walk to about here. Mm, it might not be enough. Great positioning on this arc light. It will be able to clear away these crawlers, no problem. And having a couple of extra arc lights in the background, especially arc lights with range, is super important. Wasps in the back line. Ooh, I thought I'd see it happen. There isn't really any anti-air here. And a couple of Mustangs would go a long way for both players. Let's see how it goes. This uh, sniper's gonna have to shoot a ton. Initial smoke drops. It's not too, too bad. Not too, too bad at all. Here comes the arc light. It needs to turn and get on these crawlers. It does not. And that's unfortunate. 
There goes the uh, wasps in the background. They're going to do a great job. And these distraction crawlers, man, the dance of the crawlers is just so much fun. It's so powerful. They deal so much damage. Um, not directly, but do you see how many units got pulled shooting at those silly little crawlers in the front line? It can, it can totally swing a game, as we just saw here. And that upgrade lasts forever. The ability to move your units is a constant. Another thing I'd like to bring to the, the forefront is in the most recent patch, you can actually fast forward games. I can't do so here, um, just because I'm not one of the actual players playing. But hey, if you're ever in a game, especially when there is no more anti-air on, uh, on the ground and the, your opponent has aerial units, you can choose to fast forward things. Sama's been playing very diligently here throughout the entire game, even opting to grab the uh, marksman upgrade. Increased range, less attack, and grabbing some more marksmen. I guess this is to help deal with the um, uh, fortress threat. Ooh, my god. The super heavy armor on the fortress is going to be insane. Shield's coming out. Another arc light. Very important. How's he going to deal with these wasps? Uh, Naobi. You have wasps on your flank, brother. Uh, you can shoot up, but you need cash. Snipers are not the best answer to this. Are we going to see another Dance of the Crawlers? Yes, we are. Oh, wow. And Laobi, instead, opting to get both the attack and defense. Um, that's, a, that's a spicy meatball. Oh. And Sama does not play out his missile. I think um, Leobi's hoping that the shield will last long enough for the sniper to survive. Unfortunately, the sniper was caught out of position, and it goes down quicker than a quicker than a little bit of bricks there. Uh, oh no, it's so bad. Oh, this Vulcan is eventually going to kill this fortress, and there's not really a lot on the field to defend against the Vulcan. These super upgraded snipers also just dealing so much damage. Man, you don't often see marksmen this close but they are just kissing each other I, this is the first round that will go in the way of Leobi brother though and is this a comeback these little um these little storm callers kind of walking to their own dooms oh he gets it he gets it he's gonna have to kill a tower and a, a marksman but that marksman will be distracted by uh his his own shield here for Leobi brother sama could still win this especially if these storm callers just Kind of mosey through the smoke at their the speed of butt. Oh, and they're both gonna die. Boop. A little win here for Sama, but hey, this is a great comeback for Leopi. Does he have the Mecho Punch upgrade available on his? Uh, ooh, both players opting for the javelin. He does have the Mecho Punch, Robot Punch, Rocket Punch, even Rocket Punch is a good name. I don't know why I keep calling it the Mecho Punch. I just like to rename things in games, but. The rocket punch coming out. That will be extremely useful. Ooh, and some fang. Yeah, just get a couple of fang, man. They're not the perfect answer, but they are a good answer to, to wasps. And you know, you really do need to protect both flanks. But he's out of cash. How much health does this Vulcan have? 71,000. Yep, if he pops it here, he'll get both the Vulcan and possibly a marksman, possibly some crawlers. Mm -hmm. Shield going down. This will be enough for these Fang to clear up these annoying wasps. 50 bucks. Maybe drop a, um, a missile in your backline. No backline play here by Laobi. What could be devastating, though, is putting just a couple units of crawlers or something in the backline just to delay. There's the Ignite, just dealing 6% HP damage. Um, very powerful. Ooh, I think this... Oh, it does just tag the fortress. I was going to say, I think this fortress is out of bounds, but no, it does just get kissed. And this Vulcan, also very low on HP. Kind of doesn't matter as much, though, just because there isn't really anything to deal with the, uh, the Crawlers and Mustang as everything gets distracted. And with the Stormcallers dead, there isn't really any clearing. Oh, it all comes down to Stormcallers and Snipers again. Oh, this is going to be... a fairly good win here i believe by sama it really can depend if these storm callers come online just quick enough to kill this research center 
they might. They might kill the research center and get these Mustang at the same time. Splitting their fire is actually a very good choice here because these level 3 Stormcallers... Oh my god! I really did not expect that, but they're going to do it. They need to kill this Vulcan to save him a ton of HP. They have missed five shots on these Mustang at this point. This sniper's eaten through them. Does one launch. Launch the missiles! It does not. Oh my gosh. That's the problem with Stormcallers. They're fragile and they're drunk. 90% of the time. Wasp Swarm's here coming out for Sama. Laobi Brother grabbing the tech spec. I do like the tech spec. And the double shot here by for his marksman for Laobi Brother. Sama takes his time. Both players have a ton of money. Wasp's coming down on the left. Missile coming down on the left. The, he's just hoping to overwhelm this left flank, and I think it can work. It's a wise decision. There's a serious lack of anti-air here by Laobi Brother. That shield will protect his fang. The fang will eventually cut through all of the um, wasps now at level two. A lot more wasps coming down, and there just is a serious lack of anti-air. If the snipers are dealing with um, wasps, they're not dealing with things like Vulcan. Yeah, I really like this transition. Just a whole bunch of wasps in the back line. It will just eventually crowd out and win. Look at the little fang go. They're at level 2, they do significantly more damage versus these um, wasps. Able to start clearing them out, but now these snipers are in a really bad spot as there's just actually nothing here that does mass shooting up. You know, there's no Mustang, there's no uh, arc lights that shoot up, nothing. And this huge wave of wasps will eventually win this. These snipers are just going AWOL, deciding to shoot at... Okay. I guess that's their prerogative. But this is going to be a huge amount of damage here on Laobi Brother. It may even be enough to kill him. Uh, no. It's not going to be enough to kill him, I don't think. But he, he needs anti-air. He needs anti-air, and he needs some units that just deal with chaff. Either make your arc light shoot up and grab a couple more arc lights, or get some more fang. Honestly, some fa more fang in the bank line could do quite well for himself. Ion blast here by Laobi. Ion blast for both players. Okay. Ooh, and there's the anti air barrage on the fortress. That will help. That will help significantly. These Fang get another upgrade. They'll just keep chewing through these Wasps quicker and quicker now. The Ion Blast coming down the center. That's the problem with having Stormcallers. You always want to stagger your units quite a bit. Just so that things like this don't happen. Mass Fortress. That's going to be interesting. The Shield coming down for Laobi. This is his last game. Does he burn the Midnight Oil? If he loses, he dies. There's pretty much no doubt about that. He's got another $200. Make it work, brother. Smoke, smoke, smoke. Tons of shields. I love it. Both players thinking that's the end of the game. And these wasps grabbing shields. Man, that is going to just absolutely neuter the DPS of this anti-air barrage. And a ton more wasps. I think this is the answer. I seriously think this is the answer here for Sama. If we saw two units of Mustang in the background, it wouldn't be enough to deal with this many uh, wasps at this point. Uh, maybe three with the anti-air barrage, but... Wow, did Laobi actually get the money? What? That missile came in right right on time and just killed the, the units there before anything happened. Everything gets delayed. This fortress dies so quickly. The anti-air barrage actually doing a lot of damage. These Fang need to come in here and start cleaning things up, but they're in a really weird spot. And those... Uh, the Dance of the Crawlers really made a big difference as these fortress just walked around and did nothing the entire game. Tons of wasps. Man, I love that upgrade that allows you just to run your units. It is so important. So, so important. And having the ability just to keep moving is really, really good. That's that. Excellent plays here by Sama. Sama demonstrating why he was, what, the runner-up for the Asian Advanced Group 1 in the mini tournament. Good for him. Laobi Brother was the intermediate group four champion. Good plays by both players, and I hope to see more of them. See you in the next one.
Round three in the tournament, we have Scoo versus Ego Beratuskalabadas. I'm just going to name him Ego in blue. So, Scoo has some interesting choices here. I do love this heavy armor specialist with the marksman and sledgehammer. The supply spec also has pretty good units. Ego could go with... Well, this marksman spec is actually pretty high on the HP pool. And this giant spec isn't bad either. The quick supply does have the storm callers. Actually going with the aerial specialist here. Now we have, I believe, seen Scoo on this channel several times. Ego may be newer. Let's see what he picks up here. I do love the supply specialist. Just having a few extra, um, a few extra health or a few extra coins a turn really makes a big difference. It looks like our blue player may be setting up for a headbutt with storm callers this is not something that we've seen in a tournament for as long as i can remember i have encountered it on ladder once or twice of course putting your storm callers this far forward is very dangerous ego's kind of countered it without realizing but it looks like he's going with a more uh not conservative but more usual deployment pattern in which he has units that are safe on both ends I'd be interested to see how our blue player Scoo does make this work. You know, it, it, it seems a little dangerous. Grabbing some Mustang, I think this is a great decision. Just because he needs to clear off these um, uh, Fang before his crawlers get overwhelmed by the tanks. Having more crawlers come down here as well, this is going to be tough. This is going to be really tough. I'm not so sure on this headbutt. It may work this round, but in subsequent rounds, uh, it's it's going to be tough. Tough and dirty, especially if some crawlers come in right here. They will aggro both of these crawlers and most likely still run into the storm callers. Sure, there'll be some support from the Mustang, but that extra two second delay may be long enough for him to get more units online. Crawlers coming down on for both players. This left flank will collapse. Are there enough units on the right? Yes, even the right is pushed back. These poor little Mustang are caught in a terrible crossfire. These Stormcrawlers may pick up enough tanks and kill off these Fang, but there's no way that they can deal with these Crawlers. The Crawlers are now inside their minimum range. The Stormcrawlers can't fight back, and that's going to be that for this round. Really weird headbutt. I like the idea of it. I'm, I don't know if this can even qualify as a headbutt, though, just because it, it's so fragile. It's more like a, like when a kid runs up to you and kicks you in the shin. It hurts, but it's not like a grown man just walking up to you in a bar and headbutting you in the nose. Um, so there's a lovely little image for everybody. Scoo. I would say the haste module is very important for him at this point just because his units need to be aggressive and fast. Or maybe he abandons the headbutt completely. That's a strategy that we haven't seen done very often. Ego could go with, I don't know, the haste module as well. This missile strike is very good for him. Um, just because these storm callers are in such a pattern that this missile strike is very powerful. Um, I'm kind of at a loss as to what these players should do here, though. Ego does opt for the missile strike, and he puts it right where the prediction was. Definitely a great idea, as he'll just be able to kill off both these storm callers. What did, what did uh, Scoo end up grabbing? The improved steel balls. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Tack up by fifty, but HP. That's probably more important here. I think we're gonna see steel balls out in front of these Mustang next turn. He hasn't unlocked them yet, but if he's able to put steel balls out front of both of these Mustangs, that's pretty important. Just because that will draw a huge amount of damage. There are already crawlers on the field to help deal with this. And there's more crawlers in the front line now for both players. Ooh, and some crawlers in the back. This is how you deal with a headbutt. This left flank is completely open as well. Even just putting a unit of crawlers. There we are. I was going to say, just put a unit of crawlers over there. Get both the towers. Make it work. Missile kills off all the storm callers. And these tanks are just going to have a heyday. Once the uh, crawlers are cleared up, these Mustang will do zero damage um, to a tank, especially after the 70% decrease in damage. But 
More importantly, the splash damage decreased by 40%. I mean, this tank has taken like, I don't know, 10% of its HP and damage, and each shot kills one or two Mustang. Yeah, this is not looking great here for Scoo. It could all change though. If it, these steel balls come down, have good positioning, he may be in a good spot. Ooh, portable shield is always a fun one. So you can put the portable shield on a unit that can get barrier as well, um, or you can put it on a unit that normally can't get barrier or shielding, um, like your tanks, just to make them super tanky. We do see the portable shield here for both players, and we do see it on the tanks. Arc light on the right. Will there be an arc light on the left? Uh, yep. There it is. So Ego now is in a really weird spot where he could just opt to get rid of... Oh, I love this. This Rhino is going to do so much damage. Um, he could just opt to get rid of these crawlers because once he knows that the arc light is out, arc lights are so slow. So by getting rid of your crawler here and replacing it with a flying unit next turn, you just keep your opponent having to focus over and over and over again on the flanks while you continue just to keep pushing down the center. Unfortunately, this Rhino is going to be caught out by these super tough steel balls. I may have even put the shield on my Rhino, which would have been the wrong decision here. Double Rhino. Oh, this Rhino is going to get so much work done. He's just going to march in here. Probably putting some zoomies on the tanks would be worthwhile as well. I call the mechanical rage the zoomies because it just turns your, your tanks into like these cute little bumper cars. This rhino will never die against these marksmen. It will be able to clear them up exceedingly quickly. There is a lot of damage coming out by these steel balls. Oof. And the steel balls actually get split up. And because of that, it looks like they might get taken out here by these tanks. Level 2 tanks? I don't know. They don't have the most DPS. Each shot chunks down a lot of it, but man, these steel balls. I, I, w once they came out, we knew that they would do a significant amount of damage, and they truly have. Also, of course, having these um, uh, handy-dandy little storm callers in the background dealing that damage is great. All right, well, now we know that the flanks aren't really as good of an option. Do we see some flying units come out? Of course, these Mustangs do do quite well against most flyers, but will s suffer significantly against an Overlord. Ooh, Wasp Swarm would be great for both players. There aren't really a lot of skills out currently. The Intellectual mar Lark Light could be funny, but I don't think either player will go for it. I wouldn't be surprised if both players get the Wasp Swarm. The skill specialist is good, don't get me wrong, especially if he comes out in a later point in time where you could get several all at once. Scoo playing out the wasps in the back line, there is very little anti-air here for both players. Uh, mirroring each other, unfortunately, uh, we'll have to see. If these wasps get distracted by crawlers, that could be bad. Ego does opt to eat something. I think it was this rhino, yeah, useless rhino. Might as well get rid of it. Needs something to deal with this, these ultra-hard steel balls. And you know what does? Uh, melting points actually deal with steel balls fairly well. And as we've seen, fortresses can. Um, there's some more steel balls. Gonna probably pop them right here to take care of this rhino. Yep, that rhino's dead as dirt. And it can't get any real protection. Stormcaller's coming out. That's not a bad decision. I'd be worried about some aerial units for both players, and this shield is going to make a big difference. The only two units that matter on the field right now are these Mustang. Ooh, three Mustang. If the Mustang die, then I guess it will come down to who has the most wasps. I don't know. I've got to give it over here to Scoo again. He's made this weird headbutt work, and I like it. These rhinos were a significantly poor investment. Oh, and all the fang die in the matter of one second. Oh, there's only two wasps left on the field. They will eventually... They'll out DPS these wasps in the back line. The uh, old crazy rhino did a great job just spawning in and killing. 
I love to see that. Just swapping out what you have on the flanks is a really good decision. He's going to pick up a ton of these storm callers. Good. Rhinos are expensive, but having a couple of them on the flanks can make a difference. He will definitely not be able to take out what's left, though. This poor rhino is just left without a prayer. These steel balls are going to come in here and get a lot of XP for killing this rhino as well. And there's more than enough units here to clean up what's left of these uh, wasps. This is going to be really hard. This is going to be really, really hard. Defending against the headbutt is very difficult. And if you've seen my previous tournaments, it's what knocked me out of first place last time. Um, how do you do it? I mean, the steel balls are, are rough and angry, but they're in front of the formation here on the right. I would argue put a melting point behind some units that are meant to die and pop up some shields or something. I don't know. This acid blast is huge for both players. Popping it right across the front would be a very important decision. These fang are just dying left, right, and center. They don't stand a chance against the mustang. Possibly swapping them out for something else that... I don't know. Something else that's a little bit tougher, but not too tough. That way the steel balls are still wasted. And or just having that reach. You know, these um, storm callers are in range, but steel balls actually deal with storm callers fairly darn well. Uh, I'd love to see a rhino here on the left hand side just to replace these crawlers. There's a steel ball. It will get the rhino. Probably. It will get the rhino, probably. Ooh, and there's the final blitz, just to deal with these steel balls. How much HP? 5,000? 19,000. Great choice. I was hoping that that would come out. Yeah, I think this will work now. And these Mustang are still going to be a huge problem, and there aren't really enough tanks to, to deal with. Well, if the steel balls go, I think there's enough tanks to deal with everything. They're both level 2. They're pretty powerful. Getting rid of the Mustang is really more important here, so he's opting to try and clip two units. Both units are in range to start shooting immediately. A third unit of Stormcallers. A good choice. Go, Final Blitz, go! Oh, and he makes it in on the right, not on the left, though. And that's unfortunate, as these big boys are going to make a huge amount of damage. Oh, you can't deal with these. Level 3 with the portable shields. That's really rough. He doesn't have any more chaff left. These Stormcallers will land a couple of shots here. They just don't deal that much damage. At least not against what he's fighting. The Arclight's both surviving, able to clean up those crawlers. He knows now what he needs to do, and that's protect just a little bit longer for these Rhinos to get in and die. The rhinos just need to die a little bit quicker, or last a little bit longer so that they can be a little bit quicker to die. These arc lights are also just paying for themselves. At 78 kills, a level 1 arc light. Pretty darn good. A minor loss here again for Ego. Just a, a round of cuts so far. Both players going back and forth. Oh, we see the acid out again. Level 3 Phoenix. Ooh. Ooh, man, that's mean. That is super powerful. Will the players opt for it? The level 3 Phoenix would definitely deal with these steel balls. And the, they'd have a, a lot of HP. Opting to skip here for Ego. I don't know. Ooh, the hacker coming down. Hackers are going to really suffer. Just because the um, Steel Balls have a ton of HP. I don't know if those hackers will ever make it. This Rhino still has more than enough HP to kill the uh, Steel Ball. It's not really a big issue. They do have the Mechanical Whirlwind. If he grabs the Whirlwind, they'll be able to cut through all of these crawlers and get into the units that they need to get into. Another Arc Light to force off these crawlers. More crawlers. Okay. Both players sitting around $500. Oh, interesting. Interesting, interesting. The storm callers now having the uh, increased uh, attack speed but lower range. I think that's a pretty wise decision. Yeah, these rhinos definitely need the whirlwind. 
just to clear off enemy crawlers quickly to get into steel balls to deal the damage that they need to do. Unfortunately, these steel balls will negate 100% of one source of damage. And that will probably be a detonation from these bad boys. There's the first hit. Ooh, and it kills them off. Steel balls marching down the center again. Just a waste of crawlers here on the left and right. He needs to support them a little bit more. Hacker went down exceedingly quickly. There's the next hacker dying. Yep. Uh, I don't know if that hacker choice was worthwhile. If they get barriers next turn, that will mean that they're just walking shields every turn. Which is pretty darn good. Don't get me wrong. I love that. And these uh, Stormcallers are now dealing a ton more damage. Just because the Steel Balls still have to try and force their way in. The level 2 Stormcaller is able to clear up a lot on the right. Alright, these Crawlers aren't the way to go, man. You gotta support them. Or make a make a random change. Giant Hunter's useless here for both players. This electromagnetic blast would be very good for both players. Taking off enemy tech is huge. If he disables the tech on these um, rhinos, there's nothing that the rhinos can do. They're just useless at this point. Instead, opting for the deployment mod. Where does he put him? Okay, over here on the left. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't think this will save the Steel Balls. And there it is. I've been waiting for an Overlord. Grab another one. There! Hooray! And put the Photon Charge on them. Maybe. Probably not. Maybe get the Overlord Artillery. Probably more useful. Just to bomb the heck out of any units on the floor. And another Overlord for our uh, blue player. Both players sensing that, hey, the amount of anti-air on the field is kind of trash. Oh, actually opting for the armor enhancement just because these Mustang do barely any damage at 47 damage. I don't think they can physically hurt the Overlord. No, the Overlord dro drops 60 damage. Um, yeah, I don't think these Mustang can physically hurt him anymore. Here's the electromagnetic blast coming out by Ego right down the side that where the headbutt is going to land. I don't know if the Electromagnetic Blast will cripple your own units. So he's moving it. No, he's kind of placed it right back on the uh, online. I don't know how that will work. We'll find out in a second. Does the tech get disabled on... Yeah, it does. But the explosion still goes off. I'm not really too sure how that works. Man, this hacker basically useless. The flanks don't do anything. There's a couple of overlords. Ooh, no, the overlords aren't shooting at each other. And that's that. Our level two overlord easily gonna be able to take out the level one overlords and move forward. Is it enough to kill old Ego? Probably. Yeah, more than enough. Hard battle. Both players played exceedingly well. Good game. On to the next round. Congratulations. Hello everyone, round four. We're getting close to the semifinals. This is, I believe, the third to last round. Ranma is going to be representing the red team in the northern corner. Fleefy, who we've seen on the channel many times, representing blue. Ranma opting for the giant spec with Arclight Phoenix. Uh, a very interesting choice. Um, these are some good units, and it is often very good to spawn with a couple of units of Phoenix, just because it means that something like if this Rhino Specialist has absolutely no defense against these Phoenix. So you're often just forcing your opponent into uh, picking a unit. You know, he has to get snipers or Mustang or Phoenix of his own. You know, anything that flies. Uh, you're, count, you're cutting off what the enemy can do. And I do like that quite a bit. Um, blue player Ranma opting for a couple of crawlers here on the center a very standard deployment by both players I think that this will work out a little bit more in the favor of Fleefy just because the storm crawlers could make a significant difference and I'm not sure that these arc lights will get online quick enough to kill these crawlers but we'll see we shall see here in a moment this arc light down the center is unfortunately getting targeted by just a numerous amount of units let's see if they turn they do the little arc light down the middle will probably kill off all of the crawlers here in the center. Oh, and there's enough crawlers to keep pushing forward. They do get distracted for a moment. But I think that distraction is enough for these phoenix. Oh no, the phoenix 
distracted by a storm caller. You hate to see it. He just needs a little bit more bodies here. And then he's got it for old Fleepy. And Ranma's gonna... Oh, that's it. That's it, that's it. Ranma's gonna take a little bit of damage, but both players pretty much even. There just weren't enough crawlers, nor did the arc lights have enough range. Fleefy opting for the portable shield. <gasps> subsidized steel balls, man. Oh, Ranma opting to skip. I love the subsidized steel balls. Steel balls are a great unit. Um, especially when you can catch somebody off by putting just a unit of steel balls where they don't expect it. That can make a big difference. Opting uh, here for Fleefy to put a couple of Fang in the front of his units. What this does, the Fang aren't meant to live. They're just meant to be a buffer zone. They will be outside of the range of these Fang, or sorry, of these um, Stormcallers. As the Fang advance outside of the minimum range, the um, uh, Crawlers will get caught up on them and die. Oh, we have the Dance of the Crawlers here in the center, though. Just to distract Stormcallers and Fang and Snipers, this could work out very well for him. Here come the Stormcallers. They're going to waste a lot of their time shooting at nothing. Pow, 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 pow. Let's see. The Fang are going to pick up one, maybe two kills. The distraction is just supreme, though. And if these um, Arc Lights had range, they would have actually cut through everything on the field here by now. But because there aren't really a lot of unit entities left... Ooh, these snipers advancing into a bad position. These Phoenix will be able to clear this up, and that is going to be that. Fleefy's going to take a small amount of damage just because these um, Phoenix are worth 50 points of damage at the end of the turn. That's going to do it. The Dance of the Crawlers. Just a very good way to... Oh, actually, I guess Phoenix are now worth 100 damage. Um, yeah, the Dance of the Crawlers. Just a great way to get rid of Stormcaller damage. You don't always have to kill a unit. You just have to decrease its damage. Fleefy opting for nothing. Man, Ranma, you gotta be thinking about this Rhino coming out. These Steel Balls could do a very good job. No, instead grabbing the smoke. Okay, there is some single point damage here. Ooh, and a lot more Phoenix just to deal with this super powerful Rhino and a very powerful Vulcan. Okay, let's see if it can work. Ranma just opted to burn the Midnight Oil to grab the 200% attack increase on his Arc Lights. Uh, okay. At least they'll be able to do some damage now against something like a Rhino or a um, Arc Light. Smoke popping down. It's going to draw in all of these units. Here comes a whole bunch of Phoenix. These Phoenix need to start pumping away at this Rhino. If they don't, this Rhino will just be killing Arc Lights left, right, and center. Crawlers did a great job distracting. But now come the snipers, and these snipers are angry. They've been mistreated recently, and they just want blood, taking out Phoenix left, right, and center. This is going to be a devastating loss for Ranma. Just a huge amount of damage. Oof, oof, oof. It's, what was more important, at least in my mind, is that these arc lights are able to shoot um, at the chaff units quickly. Fleefy opting to skip this orbital javelin. Yeah, Ranma needs it. It will get rid of shields. Yep, he's going to pop it here and kill the Vulcan. Um, he also just needs these arc lights shooting faster or something to take out just the, uh, the amount of chaff that comes in. That way his Phoenix can focus on the right units. More arc lights. Uh, we could see a crazy transition. If anybody is familiar with survival mode, uh, one of the rounds that you'll see quite often on Insane Difficulty is the just fully upgraded level 3 or level 4 arc lights. It's just madness. Where all of a sudden you have like uh, all of the upgrades just like this. Probably not the anti-air, but you can see it in survival mode. And they'll just gun down your entire line from all the way in the back. Uh, really interesting way to play. This smoke actually dealing a lot more damage now. Orbital Javelin killing off the Vulcan he knew about. But you know what they always say, it's not the Vulcan that you know about, it's the one that you don't. That really makes the difference here. And all of the Arc Lights get distracted trying to kill this Rhino. Man, that's uh, not the answer that he was looking for. Crawlers on the left actually able to get in without the Vulcan there for support. Will this collapse over? It all depends on how many of these distraction units survive. Our little Arc Light will take forever to die against this Vulcan. 
That's exactly what he needs at this point, just because they'll cause a lot longer of a distraction. That javelin does cinch it out here for Ranma, and he will get the javelin again in three rounds. Fleefy taking a little bit of damage. Wow, the game is so even by two points. Two points of HP. Amp core here for Ranma. Does Fleefy skip again? I would be surprised. The senior attack spec is really good. Or the amp core is very good. No, going with the senior attack for Fleefy. That 110 damage is very, very important. And now that these arc lights have range, they will be able to clear off a ton of these enemy units very, very quickly. I would like to see Fleefy just play something right at the front. Sure, it's going to die and probably die very quickly. But if he just puts something here to clear off these crawlers quickly, that can make a really big difference. Just put like a unit of Mustang or something to die. Oh my god. Fang. Okay, what is he doing with these distraction fangs? Some crawlers on the flanks would be phenomenal um, for both players, really. Never, never underestimate the crawlers on the flanks. Just using these fang for what looks to be support. Okay. Fleefy's still got an extra hundred bucks. He plays out like a million snipers just to deal with these phoenix. Not a bad idea. Uh, let's see. It's basically going to turn into... Oof. Oh, that's why you put your crawlers like a so. It's eating a storm call or a sniper shots for him. Oh, and these little arc lights are caught out. This will go down, but not not so quick as to be devastating. This rhino has so much HP. Unfortunately, that's going to win him that left hand side. There just isn't enough single point damage to deal with that rhino right now. Oh my, Fleefy might be dead here. He is dead. Wow! Very quick game. Let's go hop into another one. Good plays by both players, but the uh, we don't often see the mass storm caller. Let's take a look at oh, Sama versus Sku. Kind of revisiting this, and also uh, I want to be able to pronounce both the players' names. All right, let's just take a look. See here, what appears to be madness. Something died here. I'm guessing a unit of crawlers. This hacker has a ton of HP on the shields. Very powerful. Unfortunately, I think once it goes down, everything here will die to the Vulcan. Oh my god, why is this hacker taking forever to die? Gee Louise. Whoa, we need to see some serious DPS here in a moment. That hacker lasted forever. Vulcan, baby, you gotta do your job better. Just a significant amount of HP. What does Sku have here? Ah, heavy armor specialist. That's why. And the supply. Sama is a marksman spec and senior manufacturing. Okay. Sama loves his Vulcan. Vulcan are great units. Heavy armor plus something coming out here. I definitely need something to deal with the, um, with the units on the flanks. I do like these... Wasps. These wasps might not be enough to deal with these Mustang. And I like that you keep committing more and more units to the flanks. Oh, wow. Sama just opting to spend the $50 instead of getting a unit. Not the worst play in the world. Nothing here to deal with these wasps, though. And Sku is looking pretty strong. Sku just seems to have so many more units. It's because so much money is tied into these Vulcan with... The, another $200 in shields, $50 on a missile. That's a lot of cash spent on non-units. Let's see how this works. And this level 2 hacker, will it ever die to the Vulcan? I don't think so. I think this Vulcan's going to take a super long time to kill it. This missile is in a great place because it will kill the majority of these crawlers. And then the uh, wasps will come in and clean up the rest of these Mustang before they spawn in. The missiles being in the center is really important, though. Just able to take out those shields so much quicker. The hacker stops in a really bad spot and takes a huge amount of damage. Once those crawlers drop, it's all over. Ooh, and there goes the end of the crawlers. A lot of damage coming down on the center, though. Eventually, he'll get this uh, Vulcan. The Vulcan does have a ton of HP with the super heavy armor. And once it levels, it will get even more HP. <gasps> oh, no! A traitor! The Vulcan switched teams there for a second. 
Will this marksman pick up a phoenix? Ooh, it does not. There are enough wasps here to clean this up. But these phoenix will be able to just roam around and maybe get one or two extra kills here before the tower drops. Tower should drop in a second and the phoenix go down. Hey, but they got an extra two kills. Saves you a bit of HP. You can't hate it, you know? Just that, that little bit of HP makes a difference. Haste module coming out for Sama. Scoo. Scoo might off the switch here. Or maybe go with the deployment. Just because he's pushing these flanks quite heavily. He's got to be worried about this left flank. Honestly, a Vulcan in the back line just deals with everything. And you've already invested in Vulcan. Grab another one and cook off everything here. It'll allow your uh, wasps to get back online a little bit quicker. Yeah, he does grab the Vulcan. Yep, and he puts it in the back left line. Perfect. I love these plays. Scoo actually can deploy a Rhino and a Vulcan, though. Will he just put both down right here? Honestly, that gives just a ton of tar target um, availability. Just target, satura target saturation, I should say. I like this. This is really fun. This Vulcan, I'm not sure it will ever get through the shield. But, hey, it's there. Lots of Mustang, just to be safe. These Mustang are unfortunately going to be eaten by a Vulcan. But this Vulcan here on the left is going to be very happy. And these Fang could could upgrade as well. Sama's out of cash. Scoo still has 900 bucks with 20 seconds left. Stormcallers. Yeah, baby. Two level three Stormcallers. Or sorry, two level two Stormcallers. He paid to get the extra unit. Nice. Yeah, that this will really help him just take out shields. Crushing through these shields is very important because the moment these fang drop, uh, they're going to be able to get in here and deal with these squishy, squishy units. These Mustang will make a bit of a difference later. Oh no, here come the Rhino. Rhino's killing Stormcallers. Alright, not too bad. Mustang in the back line. It's not going to be great. This Vulcan actually able to kill off a ton of units because of the flow of battle. And I don't think this, this little guy will be converted this time around. Even though there were two deployables, honestly, Sama's looking stronger than ever. The right will actually go his way, slowly, but it will go his way, and the left will go his way. Wow, wow, wow. That's a lot of damage coming out here on Sku. Not going to kill him, but it's very close. All right, Sku is definitely in the danger zone. Um... I don't know. More Stormcallers? These Vulcan are, are very good at what they do. Maybe getting this Orbital Javelin. Sama grabbing the shield. Shielding up this Vulcan. A great idea. Man, if that Vulcan had just a little bit more XP, XP it would have leveled, doubling its HP. I wouldn't be surprised if Sku goes with the Javelin. It's not enough to kill this Vulcan in the center, but it would be enough to potentially kill this one on the left. Um, which would allow him just to completely collapse the left-hand flank. Oh. Recycling a Vulcan just to earn that extra 50 bucks. Okay. And positioning it slightly differently. I think that's a good idea. Just in case that javelin does come down, it will miss. Here comes the fire down the left-hand side for Sama. Just hoping to clear away some of these units. If all of those units get cleared away, what's left? A hacker and some... Arc lights, not the greatest. This flank will collapse against these crawlers, opting for another unit of Mustang. Two units of Mustang should be able to deal with this. Ooh, and the upgraded marksman. Will just one-shot that hacker. That's got to feel bad. Another hacker will be spawning in here on the left. I'm pretty sure this Vulcan still has its number, though. Especially once these um, crawlers go down. Yeah, it's not looking great here for Scoo. He's got a little bit of cash, though. Can he make it work? 150 bucks. Gotta be tough. No, he opts to save it. Both players saving some money there at the end. Down goes everything. Um, both flanks are wrapped up very easily. A few of these crawlers do make it in and spawn a few more. We'll see the wave of uh, Mustang coming back in to support these support these uh, Vulcan. The Vulcan does get changed. Oof. And now the Mustang actually able to push through there on the left. 
The Vulcan doesn't have the support of the snipers. It barely takes any damage, though. And the right side definitely is going to go in the way of Sama. The left, too. And this is it for Sku. GG. Having a... Uh, playing very defensively seems to have worked out very well for Sama in this game. I'd love to be able to uh, dissect that match, but I think because all of Skew's units had to charge into Sama, he had the ability just to keep staying in the back line. It looks like next round may be our semifinals, possibly two more rounds. We'll see you in the next one. Quick call to action again, guys. If anybody knows a good editor who would like to put these videos together, please let me know. We are in the semifinals. We have Joda, one of our favorite players who's been in many, many of these tournaments representing blue and our red player in the north. Uh, unfortunately, this is a language I don't speak and I don't want to misspeak by calling it a language that I'm unsure of. Our red player opting for the cost control specialist, Arclight Phoenix for Joda has storm callers and arc lights okay both players have minimal amounts of units on the field nothing that shoots up here for joda yet joda actually went with a speed specialist but he grabs two very slow units we'll have to see if he plans on using these for something two snipers is a very good play here as there's just very little on the field i do love the cost control specialist though and our blue player could easily easily overwhelm joda's lines as the time goes on there's a lot of anti-chaff currently. Opting for a couple of one crawler. Does he grab a second? He could grab a unit of Phoenix as well. Having several Phoenix would be very good here. Just because those Phoenix would be great anti-sniper, great anti-arc light. I'm not sure if these crawlers... Ah, there it is. There's the extra Phoenix. hoo -ah. Guess who can guess at things pretty well? This guy. <laughs> Well, these Phoenix are going to do a great job clearing away the arc lights. I'm not sure that they'll be able to get the snipers. Just because these snipers will be online on the Phoenix pretty early. Oh, here it comes, though. Yep. Snipers go down. And that's that's it. Joda can't win. Uh, unfortunately, some of these crawlers also survived. That's a good indication that the crawlers were well placed. How does Joda answer this? Well, more snipers would be good. A couple units to get shot would also be good. Something like tanks. Joda opting for the charged ammo. Supply specialist. Oh my god. Our blue player is going to have an extra 150 bucks a turn. That's a lot of dosh. Two crawlers here from Joda. Anything on the flanks? No. And an extra sniper. Okay. Our blue player thinking about it for a little while. He's got a ton of money. Storm callers. Yes, everything here is very slow. He doesn't know about the crawlers, but everything that he knows about from Joda is very slow. And these storm callers will do a phenomenal job at clearing that away. Maybe another unit of Phoenix as well? Or heck, just a unit of crawlers to kind of fight this line for him would be worthwhile as well. And I like this slight staggering of units. One, two, three. That way if something like an Ion Blast comes out, it's going to miss a couple of them. And that's really important. He grabbed an extra unit of Crawlers. I think that's a wise decision. Just to have some more units fighting in the center. And also to delay sniper shots. Because snipers are really good. Oh, these Phoenix grabbing the Arc Lights early. But there's enough Crawlers here to distract. And with the dis distraction Crawlers, the Phoenix are all shooting the wrong thing. Stormcaller's coming in clutch, and this is going to be a very good win here for Joda. Just trying to even things back up. In fact, he'll take a small lead. But at this point in the game, it's just little paper cuts between both players. Round three is where we really start to see significant damage come out. Joda grabbing the orbital bombardment. Both players grabbing the orbital bombardment. Do we see shields come out to defend against this? So at this point, our blue player has so much extra cash he can play it. And instead opting to send these uh, bombardments right down the center, there aren't a lot of units in the center. I'm, I'm interested to, I'd be interested to know why he chose to do this. Um, it could be because he thinks that maybe something like tanks are going to come down. A lot more snipers here from Joda. Will the snipers get an upgrade? He doesn't have enough cash. And he's been sitting on this charged shot for a little while. It's you can recycle your units to get um, equipment off of them. So if you do put the charge shot, let's say, on the sniper 
and all of a sudden a very heavily upgraded Vulcan shows up here on the left, you can recycle that sniper, put it on the sniper over here just to ping away at that Vulcan. But uh, also you can just hold on to it if you don't really need it as a surprise. Because if you do play it out, then if a, a savvy player like our blue player or a red player here see it, they'll deploy their unit on the opposite section, forcing you to have to recycle your unit or uh, counter deploy. So just a little bit on that thought process between equipment. For anybody who's interested, here comes a couple of shields. Probably grab one over here. Nope, instead grabbing the shield or the, uh, the defense increase. Worthwhile, that defense increase will make a difference. Orbital Bombardment whiffs. Ooh, Joda does quite a bit of damage with his, though. That's a lot of damage. The center eventually goes in the way of Joda as well, and now he's able to start cleaning up the right and left sides. These Stormcallers are actually in a fairly good position, though. There are two snipers left, and those snipers are easily able to clean up the remainder of the Stormcallers. Blammo! A little bit of damage coming out here on our blue player. Not too bad. Joda's shield survived, though. That sh those shields are now paying for themselves. Deployment specialist. I love this for our blue player. He has an extra $150 a turn. It's time to start swarming. Can Joda keep up with the economy? We'll find out. I could see the amp core being worthwhile here. The increased um, damage is really really worth it instead grabbing the deployment specialist i think that's probably the better one i would say that the deployment specialist is maybe the most important card in the game just especially as you get towards the late game being able to deploy three units quickly um, without the cost of another hundred dollars or fifty dollars means you can deploy four units quickly all of a sudden you can have four units of wasps spawn on the flank and just decimate a line Here's the tanks for Joda. We thought that this could happen, and they are coming out. These tanks are just here to absorb a little bit of damage, but more importantly, to clear away some of the chaff. I think this is a great decision. And opting for another unit of crawlers here just to distract these storm crawlers in the center. Very worthwhile. He cannot get the dance of the crawlers yet. He has to unlock that here from the research center, this mobile beacon. But he set them up in such a way that he can play it out. Have them run this way, then run that way, and just distract these storm callers for a, a good amount of time. Enough time, hopefully, for his tanks and other units to get in range. Oop, all the Phoenix are distracted by crawlers. Ooh, and these crawlers are actually pulling more units than he would have thought. It's not enough to fully get his units online, but it's not too bad. The range on these Phoenix is going to be telling, though. And the Phoenix with range will quickly be able to take out tanks. It's not looking great. Snipers are falling left, right, and center. Oof. Hopefully these Stormcallers get just beyond the shield. They do not. These Phoenix are targeting down snipers before the snipers can even look at them. And he needs to get that tower and get it quick. He's not going to get it in time. Phoenix, baby. They're... For the price of two snipers, you can make them fly. They have a lot less HP and shorter range, but they're pretty good. They're pretty darn good. Intensive training for Joda. Junior manufacturing for our blue player. Oh my god. The economy of our blue player is insane. Absolutely insane. Joda's got to keep heavily leveling things. He opts to level up some tanks. Man, the difference in cash is slowly going to be telling. Can Joda keep pulling off these minor victories? Here comes the wasps. You know what protects your phoenix from snipers? Wasps. Mustang would be a great answer to what's on the field currently, but Joda doesn't know about these wasps. There's two units currently. Nothing in the back lines for either player. Lots of crawlers coming in, though. And I think this is a good decision. Unfortunately, these crawlers are really unsupported. And that will most likely just mean their death. He spent another $200 on what is essentially a distraction crawler. Oh. Hold on. Okay. It's very hard to tell whose missile this is. Very, very hard to tell. But I believe it's... I believe it's Joda's? We'll find out here in a second. Nope. <laughs> it is not. It was our blue players. Um, 
That would have been great just to clear away those um, storm collars so that way the uh, crawlers could really get in. But this is just going to be a devastating loss here for Joda. Uh, he doesn't have enough um, anti-air to deal with these wasps and he's going to be playing from behind from now on as the economy of our blue player just continues to skyrocket. He does win the ground war now though. But there's just too many, too many wasps. The snipers have a little bit of range. They'll outrange the phoenix, but there's not really that many of them. Yep, and they drop on the left. There's a whole bunch more coming in on the right. It's gonna be good. Oh, and some food just appeared on my, my desk. My wife is a very sneaky young woman. Uh, hooray! <laughs> That's actually very scary. Um, I just noticed it smelled good in my office for a minute, and blammo, I have a full breakfast. Joda opting for the extended range on his tanks. I think this is very much worthwhile. It's free. It means he doesn't have to spend it uh, to actually up, uh, get the upgrade in range on his tanks. Sure, they do a little bit less damage, but he's not using them to deal damage. He's just using them to clear chaff, and neither of these units have that much HP. So, good, good choice. He needs to support these crawlers a little bit. Lots of Mustang with range coming down. I like the range increase just because he'll be able to deal with things uh, both on the ground and in the air. Of course, he can opt for the anti-air upgrade next turn, this aerial specialization from the Mustang, just to try and cut down on things a little bit more. Ooh, this missile in the center is going to clear away these tanks. And he was relying on the tanks quite a bit for some chaff clear. Let's see what happens. More units. Man, able to get four units out at a time for our blue player, and he just has the money to make it work. That extra $150 a turn, it cannot be underestimated. Not only that, his units cost $50 left, essentially meaning uh, he could have upwards of an extra $200 to $300 a turn. That's insane. He's sitting on cash now, opting to just unlock more and more things like this oil. Sticky oil right down the center. Hey, just slow things down. Why not? You've got the money. Hey, unlock your orbital beacon or drop more shields too. Fang will drop in the center. The oil comes down, slowing things down significantly. These crawlers are actually doing a really good job at just allowing the tanks to shoot though. They're unsupported crawlers, but hey, they just are doing a little bit. Mustang unfortunately get cleaved down by some of these storm caller shots. There are a few of them here, and they are taking out these wasps little by little, but also importantly absorbing uh, shots that would normally be going into the snipers. There's not going to be enough snipers to deal with all of these phoenix. Oh, and that's a pretty significant loss here for Joda. Ouch, ouch, ouch. The economy build, baby. Can he beat it? A skip from Joda. He needs the cash, which is unfortunate. Because this means that our blue player can grab anything he wants here. He has the extra money. Hell, a Vulcan right in the center could be pretty funny. I don't know if that's what I would do, but honestly, a skip here is probably worthwhile from both players. Able to get the range increase on all of their units for free. More storm callers. Oh no. These Mustang are gonna melt. These Mustang are absolutely gonna melt. Joda's out of money just like that, and our blue player still has $900 to play with. Oh no. What do you do with such such amount of hate? You can grab a level three unit, instead opting to respawn his Phoenix. This is a great idea. Oh my God, so many Phoenix. Will there be enough Phoenix just to outdo the amount of Mustang now on the field. Probably. These Mustang are going to be caught up in fire. Not only that, uh, they, they just suffer quite a bit from these um, storm callers. What could happen is putting a, a unit or two of Mustang in the front line that have the um, anti-missile. Oh my god, that fire. Oh no! Oh no! All of the Mustang drop there on the center. That oil really making a big difference. Perhaps he could have put some shielding there, but I don't think so. Poor Joda. GG. There's no way that these remaining Mustang have what it takes to clear off just the wave of salt of Phoenix and the respawning Phoenix, too. GG. Good game by both players. 
Well, we will see our blue player in the finals, it looks like. Blammo. Let's take a look-see real quick at who will be our competitors. It's Ranma... Oh, no, Ranma's lost a game. It's Sama versus somebody. I hope that they're a lovely individual. Ah, I've seen that avatar plenty of times. Sama has a small lead here. Going with his uh, Vulcan in the back again. Actually, this is Sama. Vulcan in the back again. Okay. Well, that's a very close mirror build. Okay. And double wasp on the flank. These wasps are doomed to die, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not sure if these units were here before because we're coming into this hot and fast. <gasps> Distraction crawlers. For our red player, just going to zoom around. A rhino in the back line, too. Interesting. The surprise rhino. If things get taken out, this rhino can come in and just be a significant amount of HP. Our blue player running up the flanks. Wow. Some of these crawlers survived. And look, look at this. These storm callers are all tracking these uh, runaway crawlers. Go, little crawlers, go. Those wasps on the flanks all died. Some storm callers are still tracking these just breakneck crawlers. They're going to end up... Ooh, pulling in a, a missile as well. That could be very important. Some Mustang are able to push through the fire and the flames, but they're not going to be enough, I don't think. As there are enough missiles here just to cut through. Snipers are online on both sides here for our blue player. Sama's in a rough position. I don't think he has enough. And down go the rest of Sama's units. A very minor win here for our blue player. Very minor, but he's able to even things up. Both players are now significantly in the danger zone. One major win will will just be disaster. No tank production. Man, I don't really ever see anybody take the tank production card. I don't think I've really ever taken it either. It's just, it's just kind of crap. Um, wasps, though. Mass-produced wasps. I'd love to see some more wasps coming out. These wasps on the flank are basically useless, and he can't reposition them. Okay, here's the wasps coming out for our blue player. There are no Mustang on the field here for Rama. Oh, now there are. Okay, Sama grabbing three units of Mustang and giving them range. He's worried about these uh, wasps, and rightly so, actually. He realizes that a wasp transition can be the thing that destroys him. Man, really good plays here. Our blue player still has 1300 bucks, though. He has a ton of specialists, my word. Deployment spec, giant spec, mass-produced rhino, heavy mustang, and mass-produced wasp. Versus Sama, hey, he's a supply specialist, you know? He gets an extra 50 to to $100 a turn if he keeps skipping. Let's see what these players do. I, do. I did really love these runaway crawlers last time. They were quite a bit of fun. Oil popping down here for our blue player. Unfortunately, this oil will mostly be blocked by the shield. Upgraded range on these Vulcan is great as well. Ooh, and the splash damage from the Stormcallers, just to try and clear away these Mustang a little bit quicker. Okay. Let's see how this goes. The Crawlers are dancing. There's oil everywhere. Tons of fire. Ooh, and these Mustang on the left are going to get caught and burn. Lots of burning coming down from both sides. These Mustang have a range increase. Yes, they stop just outside of the fire. But they're being cleaned up significantly. In the center, the Mustang holds strong. These wasps with shields are going to be a huge issue on the right. I don't think there's anything that can deal with them. These snipers are doing their best, but they're not going to make it through. This Vulcan has a lot of work to do, and unfortunately, it can't shoot up. Can it clear away the tower? Oh, no. Going down at just just having not enough HP. All right. Both towers are down for both players. I don't think Sama's units have enough punch in them to actually make this work. These snipers are going to have to cut through so many, and there's only one sniper left. The counter sniper fire is great, but now he's on wasps, and wasps with shields don't care. That's that. Sama's going to live by a little bit. He needs to think about how to counter his opponent. Of course, that's a very normal thing to say. Ooh. If the round had lasted 
like 10 minutes longer, that Vulcan would have died to that fire. All right, this is becoming gnarly. Orbital Javelin for both players. They've both had enough of these Vulcans. Both Vulcans will survive the damage, though. Hmm. I'm mirroring. You know, the Ignite on the Vulcan may be worthwhile. Or also just the uh, Scorching Flames. Finally, ooh. Does he clear up the rest of these wasps? I would think so. There's no real reason to keep them around. Another Vulcan in the center. Sama's thinking about it. He's burning the the midnight oil with the rapid resupply for an extra 700. The anti-air upgrade on these Mustang are going to make them significantly better. Wow. There's so many Mustang on the field now that they're just going to be able to cut through all these missiles. But is it too many Mustang? There's only two Vulcan on the field. Not really much else to deal with it. Dance of the Crawlers right down the center. He doesn't know about this Vulcan in the center. And these Vulcan are now spawning marksmen. Oh, Sama, you're in a tough spot, bud. This is rough. This is real rough. He can eat these um, wasps. I would highly recommend that he do so. Instead, opting not to. All these little crawlers burn. Unfortunate. Missile comes down, dealing significant damage to both players. But this Vulcan having basically no HP is not good. Down go all the wasps. Hey, and with the death of the wasps, he's in a much better position for Sama. These tanks aren't going to stand for much longer. And there aren't really any Mustang left. Stormcallers can make this work. Ooh, they crush a Vulcan in the center. The one on the right has a ton of HP, though, with that 300% extra health. I don't think there's anything here that can make this work. Sama going down to our blue player. GG. Great game by both players. Well, we know who's going to be participating in our finals. Oof. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Live ranking. Oh, never mind. Semifinals are coming up next. I don't think this is up. Oh, no, it has updated. Okay. Gee, Louis, a long tournament. All right, now into our semifinals. Uh, we have our red and blue players. Let's see how this game ends up. Unfortunately, I'm, again, uh, an incompetent fool, and I don't know how to speak this language, but I will not learn. A red player grabbing the giant specialist with Crawler Stormcaller. I really like this loadout. It's aggressive, it's got chaff, and the elite specialist coming out here for our... Uh, oh, wow. Hey, we've seen these avatars before. I'm unsure if this is the same players, but they've played against each other many times in the tournaments. Um, it's kind of fun that they have like this little rivalry. I'm not sure if that's true, but I think about it in my head a bit. These are some very aggressively placed crawlers. I do like this arrowhead um, or spear tip. It's kind of a more fun Warhammer reference. The tip of the spear. Um, really interesting plays. Of course, our red player kind of is forced to pick up either a unit of Fang or a, a Sniper, a level 2 unit of Crawlers. There isn't really a lot that he can do here. These Crawlers are kind of being sent to the Wolves just to charge down the center. Honestly, the Crawlers could overwhelm this entire force by themselves. Um, instead, he's opting to grab a couple of Arc Lights. Did our red player just say no? Is he AFK? There's 30 seconds until the match starts. I hope he spawns in and makes some moves. Either that or he's really thinking. Uh, oh, he's making moves. Steel balls on the flanks. He was probably wondering if it was worthwhile going for a headbutt. It could have been. These fang might be in range to support each other against this crawler aggression. I don't think they are, though. Unfortunately not. But they are in range to get absolutely nuked down by uh, Stormcallers. All of the damage in the early game is currently focused on these Crawlers. These Arc Lights, I don't think, are even going to get a single shot off this whole round. They might. They might kill a Fang. Yeah, yeah, he killed a Fang. What about you? You're not going to do anything, I don't think. 
Well, we have one kill on an arc light. Will he get this kill? Nope. Uh, yeah. Arc lights were basically useless this round. That's the problem with arc lights, is deployment is huge for them. If they are just misplaced, they will do literally nothing. They're so slow. But I do love them. They're so cute. Look at this guy. Just got a big old gun in his tummy. Blah. Oh, I guess that's where you sit. I didn't realize that that was the cockpit. Hold on. Blue player opting for what? Mass-produced sledgehammer? Red saying, nah, I just need the cash. Honestly, I like the haste module as well. Sledgehammers could be fun. The missile spec is okay. Yeah, he grabs the the um, haste module. I just was interested in the arc light here for a second. Yeah, I guess that's where you sit. I didn't realize that it was a um, piloted machine. Oh, wow. What? Calling it in a weird way, this melting point is actually in a fairly good position to deal with these Vulcan. Okay. Uh, very strange, but hey, the haste module on the melting point does just make it significantly stronger. And you know what? He probably grabbed this melting point because one, Vulcans are very prevalent. But two, melting points deal with steel balls really well. He's going to need to kill these steel balls very, very quickly, though. Oh, it's not looking great. As these steel balls come online, they're just going to melt this melting point. Oh, no. With the melting point dead, he may have enough storm callers to deal with this, but that's a level 2 Vulcan. It's going to take forever to kill the arc light just because of that, um, because of the tower dropping. But now that the tower's gone, oh my god, I have never seen storm callers miss that many shots before. Well, I'm, I'm lying. I've seen storm callers miss plenty of shots. Oh, this Vulcan. It's got a huge hitbox. Those are some good barrages. It will die. Ugh. Well, our blue player just able to guess. And that guess was super important. Uh, all right. Well, we'll see how this goes. This is a very different game than I'm used to seeing. Wasps would be great for both players. Red opting to skip. Shields would be good for blue as well, just because this Vulcan would not be able to cut through those shields very quickly. That extra 40% health would be great. Um, and I do like the tanks, you know? Decreased attack and HP is real bad, but you can get a lot of them. And putting a couple of tanks here just to deal with these uh, Fang a little bit quicker, or Mustang. Level 2 Mustang coming out for some reason. Um, just to deal with Crawlers a bit quicker. Okay. It's not bad. Our blue player is really thinking about it. Yeah, two Mustang coming out for a red player. Opting to eat the melting point so that he can grab two. Okay. And the play is to hold them back a little bit further. Okay. Okay. Well, the melting points are pretty good and they can spawn um, crawlers. And they have energy diffraction. Okay. Interesting uh, playouts. He's really worried about the wasps, I think. Uh, and he wants to be online to take out Vulcans a little bit quicker. This could work. This could work quite well. Unfortunately, these Fang are all just going to run to their dooms. And these Mustang will come online at a pretty good point as well. I don't think they will be overly useful besides clearing out the crawlers, but this Mustang will make short work of them. Steel Balls making a great show for themselves, able to clear away a ton of units. This one must, or this one uh, melting point is getting distracted, killing, but it will be online on the right units. And down goes this Vulcan very quickly. This poor unit of background fang. Just kind of, kind of not really doing much this game. But they do protect his backline from things like wasps. Uh, oof, that's a lot of damage on a red player. Blue is holding very strong. Very, very strong. Do we see the answer to the Vulcans and melting points? Does our blue player know how to deal with these uh, very safe Vulcans? I think so. Improved firepower on the Vulcan would be huge. Uh, electromagnetic blast is great just because it, it comes very quickly. The electromagnetic impact, I should say. It's not a very big impact, but it can shut down units. The red player grabbing the improved fire control. Is it going on the Vulcan? Yeah, it is, of course. Missiles for our blue player? Strike specialist? The strike specialist could be very good here. Just putting like a unit or two of crawlers right here. 
means that they'll flow in at a really good pace. They'll die to the level 2 Vulcan very quickly, or the uh, level 2 Mustang too, but it's something. A lot of upgrades available here for our blue player. Ooh, and he grabbed the missile. Okay, he just wants to take out those, um, those Mustang. And the crawler upgrade's really important here. Do we see the crawler upgrade from the melting points? No, opting for more storm callers. He's worried about this, so he grabs a little bit more AoE. Okay. Our red player's out of cash, but grabbed some level 2 crawlers of his own. And is he putting those on the flanks? Nope. Okay. Blue player opting for some fire. This actually works out very well um, as anti-steel ball crawlers, just because the steel balls, steel balls tend to get targeted down by storm callers. If your storm callers kill a steel ball and the steel ball is in fire, then all of the crawlers die. Blam up. Getting the Mustangs and dealing a little bit of damage here to the steel balls. It's a lot of fire on the left and right. And these Mustang are going to run right through it, I think. Oh, yeah, they are. That's a lot of dead Mustang. Both units of Mustang cleared away. Uh, but these crawlers, man, they're going to make a difference. The melting point just gets distracted. It's clear on the right. Right side clear, but it is definitely not clear on the left. Steel Ball standing in the fire for a second. They will be able to kill this tower very quickly. Oh my god, and these storm crawlers somehow all miss. Oh no, the crawler rage. Will the steel balls perish in the fire? It looks like yes, and no more crawlers on the field. That should be that. Unfortunately, a lot of friendly fire coming down here from these background storm crawlers. Um, whoopsies. That's something you gotta worry about. If the enemy is able to position... Bro, this guy has like no range. Um, if the enemy is able to position units very close into your own units, your storm callers can burn down your own sides. What does our blue player do with this? He's been winning a lot of mount rounds. Subsidized steel balls is huge for either player. Red grabbing the laser sight. What's he gonna put it on? Maybe the Mustang? I don't know. Upgrading the range on Mustangs pretty cheap. Blue taking a long time to think about it. Just want to see red play out. Oh, both players opting for the laser sights. Okay. Laser sights on the melting point is pretty important. Hackers! Hackers with the laser sight. Okay. Just to help deal with these steel balls. There's nothing on the flanks. I just have to rotate the camera a little bit to check in on those things. Uh, these storm callers really are crying out for an upgrade. Their DPS is falling off in a big way. Ooh, the hacker's getting shields. Delicious. Opting for a third unit. Is it going to be another hacker? Our red player burning the midnight oil for another Vulcan. What is our third unit from our blue player? He has cheap tanks. He has the mass-produced tanks. It's kind of fun. He hasn't deployed them yet. Oh, it's going to be a third hacker. And these hackers have been able to convert Vulcan. It's not perfect, but they can. Man, the hacker coin flip. Let's see if it works. This um, sentry's placed in a very interesting way. I think it's just here to take care of these crawlers. Okay. Okay, okay. Here comes the mass burning. Both sides committing just a huge amount of war crimes. And it should work out very well. These Mustangs still don't have the range, so they're all just going to drive into the fire and perish. <sighs> but he converts one, and this completely delays the entire enemy army. Ooh, my word. He's converting them very quickly. And this is the thing about hackers. If they're able to convert units over and over and over again, they will just keep turning your army against itself. Unfortunately, the hackers did not survive quite long enough, and this Vulcan... Ooh, is he going to get this melting point? If he gets the melting point, the Vulcan is basically uncontested. Unless the hacker gets online very quickly. Yeah, there's no way it's going to have enough... Does it have enough juice? Oh my god. <gasps> oh no! Jeez, that was so close. The hackers were an interesting play. He just needs a little bit more damage on the field. And Blue losing his first round. That's gotta hurt. 
but he has a lot of time. And our red player is going to have significantly less money. This Ion Blast is very good for both players. The Photon Coating can be good, but the Ion Blast right down the sides can really make a big difference. Having these hackers, though, with the shields just constantly means that he has, what, a 25,000 or 25,000 extra HP just to guard these units up? These melting points need an upgrade, though. Range, crawlers, something. And honestly, I think the crawlers might be the way to go just to pull these um, uh, steel balls away from him a little bit. Very good placements on both ion blasts. Our red player doesn't have a lot of money. Blue still has $1,000 to play with. Getting some fang. Okay, where's he putting these fang? Distraction fang? Nope. Okay. Interesting. I don't see the fang. I'm sure they're here somewhere. Ah, right at the front. They will in initially get annihilated. I'm interested to think about what the thought process here is for these little guys. And some cheap tanks. Maybe he misclicked? No, the fang... Ah, it's possible that he misclicked. Just given the positioning. Um, I think these fang are really just here to distract. They're going to die so quickly, though. It's a very expensive distraction. Get the crawlers, man. Or mass upgrade your storm crawlers. That's cool, too. He's sitting on $250. He has an extra $250 for our blue player at the end of this match. Yeah, and all the fang just die. Um, reason unknown. They were possibly meant to be tanks. Ooh, the hackers are in a bad spot. And this uh, unupgraded uh, melting point does die. If it had the upgrade, it would have lasted significantly longer. That's unfortunate. The melting point's still alive here on the left. And this hacker is still alive as well. Now well, for a moment. There's definitely not going to be enough here to deal with this. And the upgraded range on these Vulcans means that they're just able to get on on the melting point. These melting points needed an upgrade. A lot of damage is, is being wasted as these melting points just aren't able to get online quick enough. And that's the second major victory for our red player, even at only having $900 compared to our blue player's $1,200. This is bad. Orbital Bombardment for red. Tech spec here for our blue player, finally. Will he upgrade and change up? No. Uh, instead, leaning heavily into these hackers, is it just going to be the march of the hackers? Is he going to try and overwhelm the enemy player with just a million hackers? He could try. I don't know how well that will go for him. Oh, instead of opting into some overlords, this is definitely a wise decision. The anti-air boils down to two units of Mustang that die, and three units of... four units of Fang? No, three units of Fang. These overlords are going to wipe the field. And they have wasps. I really like this decision. Orbital bombardment on the right doesn't matter too much. Ooh, this is now a uh, 50,000 health. It's pretty good. Range increase on the storm callers, a wise decision. I don't think this uh, Vulcan will ever die unless we see a little bit more here just to protect. These tanks, I think, were eaten. He realized that the tanks were basically useless against the super upgraded Vulcan. It's going to be rough, but I think it all comes down to these overlords. And the overlords being in the far back just gives them time to spawn a lot more wasps. All he needs to do is let his Stormcallers kill the Mustang, and he wins the game. Ooh, even opting to take out these Fang. Wow. Okay. Shields come down on both flanks. He knew that these Fang would probably be unguarded. And he's just making it work. He even gets a little Stormcaller for his troubles. The Orbital Bombardment is out. It's not very good. Hackers are slowly dying. To enemies unknown. They do delay a lot of this damage. The Hackers on the left did a great job. That range really making a difference. Melting Point is on the wrong units, unfortunately. Will it turn and get this Vulcan? Man, if it had that extra HP, it may have survived a little bit longer. Wow, Vulcan! The, the enemy unknown, Vulcan in the enemy base. This little guy's going to get a lot of uh, a lot of damage put out on him. But there's nothing else that shoots up, and these two overlords will win it. They're not enough to kill the enemy player. 
but this does bode very well for blue just to get more and more damage. There's the speed up. What happened is that there's no longer units that shoot up. This is actually great. He wants to lose his towers. So that way more and more wasps will spawn. Does he get another round? No. But hey, those wasps added probably another 100, 200 damage. Pretty good. Pretty darn good. Our blue player still has a lot of time. Red player opting for the nano repair kit. If blue gets the lightning storm and there aren't shields, he wins. This is where you can just go for the kill, and he does. Range increase on the Mustang. There's only two Mustang. And these overlords both can upgrade. If these overlords upgrade, that's probably it. I don't think the Mustang will ever have enough damage. Melting point right at the front. Ooh, with the uh, electromagnetic barrage. He's abandoning the left flank. Okay. There's the storm. If the storm lands, oh, that's really rough. This Vulcan may be able just to chew through and get at this Overlord. Or this Melting Point. Three Overlords now. Overlords, none of uh, our blue player's units are very well upgraded. Our red player, of course, being the Elite Specialist, has a lot of level two and three units. I think that if he upgrades these Steel Balls, it's probably worthwhile. Grabbing some wasps with shields, just so that way these overlords are a little bit tougher. I'd love to see these wasps kind of deploy right down the center, I think. Um, just early. You know, they will get pulled over by these mustangs, but if they're able to get in there and clear away a couple of these uh, stormcallers, that could be worthwhile. Level 3 hacker. Now at 75,000 HP on those shields. Very important. Here comes the storm. Oh, and that storm is going to be devastating. Without these Mustang here to protect against the Overlords, uh, that's good night, Irene. Tons of storm callers drop. These Vulcans are still going to be extremely powerful, but you know what? Uh, it doesn't matter because there's literally nothing else that shoots up besides what? Three Mustang? That's not going to be enough to clear out what's coming for you. He may be able to convert this Vulcan. Please! He gets it! Oh my god, he gets it. And that hacker earns itself a level. I don't think there'll be another round. There definitely won't be another round as our red player just burns and burns. His own Vulcan joined the winning team at the end. Oof, that's a lot of damage. GG, both of these players playing extremely well. Alright, live ranking. Oh no, Lol lost. Ah, uh, man. I was hoping to see him in the finals. Well, it will be our... Potentially, our final round. Again. Because it seems like we have a little bit more to go. Let's see what happens between our two, two players here. We've seen both these players on the channel before. Giant Hunter coming out for our blue player. He has the time... Or if he continues to kill Vulcan, he will be able to just boost his economy. He definitely has an economy build, that's for sure. Our blue player also going a little bit into the economy, but not as much. Oil from our blue player. Oil right down the center burns off a ton of marksmen. Kind of a low entity game again. Oil coming down on the right. Some Fang here just to get shot. More Stormcallers. Not really a transition to the air for either player, just because these Marksmen will just clip any air units so quickly. The double shot as well, just to try and clear away these uh, Vulcan a little bit quicker. I like this. And this oil is placed very well from the blue player. Our red player has $250 left. Blue opting to grab... What is that? Another unit of Fang? Yep, another unit of Fang. Will our red player use the $200? I would think he should. And you know what? It may be worth just putting some distraction units on the flanks. No, I think he sat on those $200. Let's see if it makes it... See if he can live through it. Fire down the center. It won't really grab anything. And in fact, might be damaging here for our uh, blue player. 
Ah, there's some tanks that will sit in the fire. Just for a second, if this Vulcan makes it in. On the left, it looks like a ton of Vulcan marching forward. There's not a whole lot of damage to deal with these Vulcan. However, our blue player did just earn himself 50 bucks. Will he get 50 more? Most likely. There's another 50. Oh my god, these wasps really making a difference. Oh my god, our blue player is going to have so much more cash, though. The improved range on these storm callers is really important for taking away all of these snipers. Jeez, that is a lot of snipers, though. Having another wave of crawlers here would be phenomenal. Of course, that isn't really a great option at this point. Ooh, the parasitic ammo. Something has it. It's the storm callers. And just able to turn away a lot of these snipers. Very important. There they go. Oh my god. Our blue player able to pull it off. Not a huge amount of damage, but some. And with that giant spec, that giant killer, let's see how much more money he has. Wow! 2,150! Senior attack here for our blue. He's got the money to make it work, so why not? Extra 30% damage. He's already down to $1,200. You know, both players looked like they spawned in with 2,150, but that giant specialist should have gotten him at least, what? One, two, three, four, five, six. 300 extra dollars. Uh, both players opting for the senior attack specialist. Lots of Stormcaller upgrades. I do think that that's wise. The Vulcan did not set the oil alight. I think that's probably for the best. Anti-air Mustang. Oh my god. Lots of overlords. And they're going to be spawning lots of wasps. Does our blue player have enough Mustang? He has four. Four with the range and anti-air upgrades. They're level two and level three. It may be enough. That's a lot of overlords. Wow, and look at them go. This is a cool formation. All right, let's see what he can make make do. These Vulcan definitely need a range increase. There isn't really a need for it currently, though. Not too much. Lots of shields from both players. Well, we see where that extra $300 went into three shields, and then he had to spend for 100 Not bad. Ooh, very smart plays by our red player, opting to have the overlords just boogie back and forth. What this is going to do is allow them to spawn just a ton more wasps in the back line. And that's exactly what it needs. Stormcallers have a few upgrades. The reason these Stormcallers are desperate for these upgrades is just to knock through that barrier quickly and start killing off enemy Stormcallers, and they do so very, very rapidly. Mustangs are online, and they're killing wasps very quickly. Very, very quickly. He's going to need them to take out these overlords as well. These poor little fang are marching to their dooms, and so are these mustang running into the fire and just burning away. That's unfortunate. There are a few snipers left in the background. This parasitic ammo is doing a great amount of work. These overlords are too slow. They're not going to be able to re-enter the battle. And there's a ton of mustang left. Unfortunately, these overlords just spent a little bit too long doing the old boogie-woogie. And that's going to cost them their lives as they're just pinged down by a million little gun trucks. Oof. That's GG. Blep. Good game by both players. Unfortunately, those overlords just took a little bit too long. Could have used their DPS on the front lines. Now let's see. One round left. Final round, baby. Here are our top two players. I'll see you in a moment. Wanted to touch on a point from previously if anybody is an editor and they are willing to edit these videos for free please let me know we have our red player versus our blue player oh let's take a look see uh hmm i do like this supply specialist but the hp is a little low on him cross control specialist is a pretty interesting build out instead going with the aerial just having that extra 4700 hp is a lot it's a lot of HP for our red player. Giant spec for our red player. 4,700 for our blue player. Interesting choices. Blue has the aerial specialist. Uh, hmm. Well, some uh, Phoenix would not go astray here. This giant specialist could turn into these uh, background Vulcan that we see so much. A very standard deployment from both players, at least so far. Blue likes to take his time though. And I do like this, he is the weekend tournament grand champion as well. 
from last week. So he knows what he's doing. Did this guy, was he the runner up? Oh my God, he was for the mini tournament. Was this the mini tournament? No. Okay, I was wondering if he, uh, our blue player beat our red player last time and it's like a revenge match. That'd be quite quite fun. I like a good grudging. Bit of a dwarf myself. I'm like a tall dwarf who doesn't have a beard and is also thin. I'm like the I'm like an elf actually. Crap. <laughs> this is a little weird banter. This tournament has gone on for like three and a half hours at, at this point. Great. I love to see it. Blue, come on, man. Get a move on. What are you doing? Are you waiting to catch this guy's stream or something? Hurry up. The turn timer is set to such a point that it won't work. Oh, going with a headbutt, actually. A quick change. These steel balls will probably get overwhelmed by the uh, by the crawlers. Ooh, and he saved all of his money as well. I wonder if he was having connection issues or something there. Just because, unfortunately, these steel balls are completely unsupported, and these fang are basically worthless in their position zones. He might be setting up for a headbutt next turn, but a very strange way to do it. These steel balls are just alone and without a prayer. They're going to get absolutely demolished. Uh, these fang will eventually run in and clear up maybe the rest of these crawlers. But there's a lot of crawlers left, and fang are garbage. Um, at least at killing units. They're very good at dying, but yeah, those crawlers didn't didn't need to do anything okay that is unfortunate at least it's now an even game at least hp wise our blue player will have a ton of money both players opting for the laser sight blue is an aerial specialist he could get some snipers here a lot more uh, snipers coming out for our red player just because he wants to deal with these steel balls Ooh, blue grabbing an overlord early uh, what? This overlord will get absolutely decimated by the snipers. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, we do see more crawlers coming out for our red player. I think that's a great decision. Um, hmm. More crawlers down the center will help. This is kind of a weird one. Very untraditional build here by our blue player. Uh, he'll kill off all the Stormcallers, which is great. He'll even get a couple of these Marksmen. In fact, he might be able to get all of the Marksmen if this Overlord doesn't target down nothing. Uh, yeah, this Overlord could just die to a, one Marksman. No, it does eventually clean it up. Unfortunately, there's still two Marksmen and a whole bunch of other units left on the field. These little Fang are in a shooting gallery, but... Their days are numbered as the missiles start to land around them. Oof! Keep shooting, lads! We'll get them all! Jeez, it's like Starship Troopers. Well, there's one more sniper. That sniper will take two shots to kill the Overlord. And the sniper's distracted a little bit on these Fang. Oh, there goes the tower. Isn't enough. Overlord's on sniper, and that's that. Nothing else shoots up. Man, that was a real gamble. The Overlord's level two now. Uh, it won't work next round, especially because the positioning of this Overlord is ultra-aggressive, meaning it's very easy to counter it. Okay, it's a good amount of damage, too. You know, that extra, what, 500 damage-ish? Not bad. Not bad at all. Overlord can level. He'll definitely need that level if he means to continue to, you know, survive with the Overlord, or he might just swap it out. Underground threat here for our red player. Let's see how he spends his money. Where does he put the underground threat? Right flank. It will get slightly countered by these fang, but the fang will die. Underground threat for the blue player, and down goes the overlord. Okay. Really, really weird place. Oh, and he's redeploying it over here on the right flank. <laughs> and giving it the, uh, the shooting. Okay. Play out some wasps with it, just for the protection. The current anti-air on the field are these several snipers and another overlord this will work it's a wow what a weird game and these two fang in the background have done basically nothing uh, but they're here you know they'll get killed that's their goal that's their job 300 extra bucks he's gonna play out another unit what's it gonna be some more wasps potentially 
maybe a unit of crawlers in the back line. Put it right here. Let them get shot. Distract units. Who knows? Where does he put those crawlers? Ah, they are in the back line. Just to distract. Uh, look how many units he's distracting. All of these steel balls are now able to get online. And they're just going to take this tower so quickly. Yep, down goes the tower. Crawler wars have begun. These Fang are eventually going to be able to clean it up with the support of this mothership. The mothership would have been much more useful on another flank, but uh, that's okay. It's coming back online. And the, the Overlord is actually able to shoot from a really weird, like, engagement angle. It doesn't always need to shoot straight, like most other units with a gun turret. It can actually just be facing slightly off-keel and take out units. Ooh, it's going to be close. If the tower drops, he's in a super bad way. I think the tower will drop. Ooh, the sniper. The sniper's aggressive. With the tower dropping, this is very bad. The Overlord's out front. The only two units that matter here are the Overlord and the Sniper. There's a couple of Fang that can absorb shots. Oh, Overlord drops. And the Sniper just won't have the DPS to deal with this. Once again, the Overlord can earn a level. Um, I don't know if our blue player will ever level it up. He's often chosen not to level his units. Oh, wow. Melting point, huh? Assault melting point. That's kind of fun. Haste module would be good. Orbital bombardment would be good. Hey, and actually the subsidized steel balls aren't too bad either. Well, haste module coming out for both players. This is a very different game than what we're used to. Ooh, missile coming down. Do the wasps get shields? Did he just eat his overlord again? He did not. Instead of playing out more crawlers. We see some Mustang. Crawlers in the background are going to do a great job. Another Overlord. It will just instantly get gimped by the Overlord here on the left. He needs to support it in some way. Giving it the haste module is great, but it will just die to one barrage. Uh, spawn? Spawn wasps? He needs something. Or else the Overlord is just dead. There we are. A unit of crawlers. Fantastic. Upgrade this Overlord, perhaps? I love this distraction. It will get shut down a little bit quicker by the Mustang, but just having it is really important. That way your units can get online and kill the enemy units quickly. It's amazing how our blue player is basically winning this with what appears to be two or three units. These background Fang are doing little to nothing and opting to get the reload on the Overlords. Very similar to the... Um, launcher upgrade for the overlord or for the fortress and it works he's able to move in and just start killing really quickly jeez these overlords just have no chill as they march down the field killing tons of units but the problem is, is that these fang are able to distract very quickly a few mustang left on the field but these overlords are able to take them out it still needs to get that level two just so that the dps is one greater Two, able to uh, take a lot more sniper shots and he's not able to make it work as there's just enough crawlers to distract the overlords a good amount of damage oh my god about as even as you can get in these games well subsidized mustang would be great for both players you can make an argument for mustang for both players more 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 mustang our blue player going with the ion blast Ion Blast right down the right flank or the left flank would do a lot of damage. Recycling an Overlord for the red player. And the ability to buy more. Opting for just two, maybe three units of Mustang? I think that's worthwhile. Mustang have the laser sights. There's the Ion on the right side for our blue player. And the anti-air spec. Yeah, these Overlords, their days are numbered. Their days are really, really numbered. These distraction crawlers are great, though. Wow. And the splash damage. How strange. What a weird thing. Are we seeing overlords played as anti-mustang, um, anti anti-crawlers? Uh, what a weird way to do things. Our red player also has the opportunity to play another unit. Blue player has tons of cash. What did he pick up? Nothing. Okay. Oh, he has the ion. Duh. 
Uh, ooh, and a rhino. A level two rhino. Where's that going? Over here on the left. Uh, okay. I've, I've not experienced a game like this in a long time where I'm just kind of at a loss as to the strategy. Everything seems to be just kind of cobbled together. The synergy is kind of there, kind of not. Uh, okay. Lots of level one overlords. All of these fang get decimated. The laser comes in. It will kill one unit of uh, stormcallers, and that's about it. The right flank is just completely obliterated. The left is not going very well either. And overlords are already dead. These fang are just here to distract, though. Crawlers in the back line. That's going to be that. I'm not really too sure what our blue player's plan is. It seems to be Overlord, uh, unupgraded everything, um, versus hard counters. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just silly. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. But these first five rounds have really just been madness, in my opinion. Uh, it's worked for several rounds, but now we're starting to see it kind of fall apart. Giant Hunter here for our red player. Definitely worthwhile, as he's going to continue to kill Overlords. <gasps> A fortress. Okay. The decreased damage on this Overlord is really bad. Minus 40% damage just means that this this fortress will deal a ton of damage and take a long time to die. I think he played out this fortress just to deal with this Rhino. But importantly, the fortresses can also get shields. And just having a couple of units with that barrier upgrade constantly there is very important. Our blue player actually grabbed the barrier as well. Oh, and he grabbed a Vulcan. Vulcan with shield over here on the right. Our steel wall's actually getting some lovin'. Snipers have long range. Ah, wow. If our um, red player wanted to, he could very easily just decimate these flanks. So far, he hasn't chosen to, but he very easily could. If he were to play one or two level, uh, level two upgraded um, Mustang on the flank, that'd be very difficult for our blue player to deal with quickly. And I'd love to see a mass deployment on the flanks here by our red player just to push in the win. This overlord's saying, ah, I don't want to be here too much. He's going to run and then boogie back. Okay. Range on the Vulcan as well. Just to clear away some of these Mustang. I still think the Mustang will outrange the, um, the Vulcan and shoot the overlords, but we'll see. Okay. Wow. Mass missile. Here comes the, uh, just tons and tons of Mustang. The straight down the middle for these, oof, for these crawlers. And nothing, I don't think a single shot was fired on the left-hand side here for our blue player. This Vulcan made a good work for itself. It's already allied top one in damage. Getting a ton of kills. And it'll absorb quite a bit of damage before dying. But this is a huge amount of damage on our blue player. Just a huge amount of damage. Oof, oof, oof. Little Fang in the background, trying to stand their ground, but die very quickly. Is this enough to kill him? Oh my god, it's very close. Very, very close. Can Blue pull this back? I don't know. Uh, there's been some weird builds. And our red player now has 150 extra bucks. You can see it here. I think he already spent some of it. The enhancement module. Okay. Saved himself $50, and then he killed the Stormcallers just to get the, that money back. Stormcallers aren't really too useful in this situation anyways. Where did he put the Enhancement Module afterwards? On the Mustang. Okay. For those who don't know, the Enhancement Module, it makes your units uh, upgrade for free. But the Recycling gives you full refund. So if you upgrade a Fortress for $200 normally, instead with the Enhancement Module it's free, then you recycle it, you just earned 200 bucks. Of course, now you don't have a fortress, and to purchase a fortress costs $400. So it's good if you have an obsolete unit like these Stormcallers, just to recycle it and then put it on a unit you actually need, like these Mustang. There's the burninating from these Vulcan, but uh, they're going up against some really mean fortress at this point. A red player drops the uh, underground threat right in the back corner, or back middle. Smoke, underground threat, and mobile beacon, and a field recovery open to our blue player. 
Here comes some crawlers. These crawlers are actually going to be very important. Just to try and peel away a little bit of this damage. Oh, and the life link on these steel balls. The steel balls haven't really lived very long, but it's not a bad decision. This Vulcan is in a prime position. He, d he doesn't realize it, but that Vulcan's going to do a lot to save him. Kills off one unit of, of uh, crawlers, he's going to kill the other. The left flank is just an absolute death zone, though. This fortress is going to march through and kill everything. Steel balls were able to last quite a while just because of that life siphon. But as the uh, random little units make it in, the steel balls become much less effectual. Down go all of the Mustang, but it's just not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. He has nothing really to deal with these fortress. And that's that. Good game. Our red player showing a good amount of uh, decision making here at the end. He lost the first couple of rounds to some weird shenanigans, but our blue player was not able to pull it off in the end. GG. Let's take a look at the tournament standing. Here are our winners. Congratulations to everybody. I'd like to give a little shout out to Luck. He's been playing in all of these tournaments. That guy puts in a lot of time. Congratulations to everybody else who played through the tournament. I think that you all are wonderful people. I hope to see you in the next videos. Please like and subscribe. And we'll talk to everybody else soon. Bye.